Everything in the following video is alleged and for fun and entertainment purposes only. Right, Alan? Hey Earthlings, welcome back to Cloud Shadow TV. I'm your host, Jesse. This is my co-host, Alan, and we are back for another episode of the Alien Abduction Support Group. Now, this one's a little bit different, a little bit more lighthearted. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to be uh, rating these celebrity alien Halloween costumes that I found. Some of them are pretty great, some of them are not. <laughs> um, and I'm going to then match them to their real alien species. Um, Alan, what do you think about these alien species? They don't have his species listed, so he's a little bit biased. So where do these real alien races come from, you ask? Well, they come from this book of alien races, which you can form your own opinions about for this episode. This is all in fun, which supposedly comes from the KGB, um, and they the aliens gave this book to the KGB because they wanted humans to add themselves as like another alien species. I'm pretty sure that's like the origins of this story, but it does go into popular alien species like the Greys, Anunnaki, and Zeta Reticuli, I believe. We'll get into it. So uh, if you have any interest in alien species, if you have any interest in celebrities, we're going to be looking at Kylie Jenner, Kim Kardashian, Northwest. We've got a great list of celebrities who have dressed up as aliens, and uh, I'm going to judge how well they did it. So uh, let me know if you agree with me in the comments. Let me know if there's other celebrities I missed who maybe nailed it or did not nail it so much. So, like I said, everything in this episode is completely alleged. Um, it's up to you whether or not you want to believe these alien species are real. And this book is a little bit controversial. It actually like brings up 2022 a lot. So, I mean, I'm gonna read it, but this is all fun, alleged. All right, so first we have Lil Nas X, who I absolutely love. I think his music videos are amazing. I think he is hilarious on the internet and his music is fun. So um, this is his costume. Uh, as you can see, he is an alien. He, he actually said this costume is, is called Alien Superstar, inspired by the Beyonce song. So he's rocking it, love the costume. I have to give it a five out of five. Alien heads. Alan, uh, what do you give Lil Nas X? This costume rocks. I think it is, you know, on Halloween, that's your excuse to be sexy. You got that tight fitting material. You've got, you know, certain places more expressed than others. Um, he's got this third eye thing going on. It's pretty dope. I'm into it, Lil Nas X you get an A plus from the alien abduction support group on your Halloween costume. Let me know if you agree in the comments. He, I believe, is dressed up as an Anunnaki alien. Um, so what is an Anunnaki alien? Please excuse my pronunciations. I'm gonna try my best, okay? These are some alien words. So, you know, my earthling brain, I'm gonna try my hardest with it. So here we go. So I guess technically the Anunnaki are called Anunnakin and they come from the planet Nibiru. Their planet is in the same solar system as Earth, but with a much farther orbit. It comes closer to the sun every 4,000 years and not every 3,500 years as commonly accepted. They resemble humans, but are higher and more muscular. I believe this means taller, higher means taller. When the Anunnaki first visited Earth, there were other races already here. Some of these other races were malevolent and with supernatural powers. The Anunnaki defeated them and became the most powerful race on Earth. They then genetically engineered the most intelligent non-alien species on Earth, which is us, who were humans, who were merely primates, but smart primates at the time of their arrival, in order to have a race of slaves at their disposal. At the time, Samil and Lilith were the Anunnaki king and queen, and they were not aware of the reptilian presence on Earth, which we will get into the reptilians 
soon. They only cooperate with one other alien race, the Zeta Reticuli, and that is not to be confused with the Greys, which technical alien name is Solipsi Ray. Eventually they left Earth for unknown reasons, but not before creating a subspecies of the Zeta Reticuli. These species then became pharaohs of Egypt until the reptilians invaded them as temple priests and ended their reign. They gave birth to the legends about giants. They will return one day as promised, but however, the date of that return, return is a mystery. And they do know what is going on on Earth as of all of the planets that they've had an influence on. The proximity of their home planet does cause some issues for them, like cosmetic instability and weather-related repercussions. How far they are from us is still a mystery. So the other possible alien race that Lil Nas X may be dressed up as um, is called Mythile. I picked this one because he has like this skeletalness to him and um, the alien has like a skeletalness to him. So these aliens were once related to the reptoid species but are not themselves reptilians. They come from the constellation Serpents and the star Alia. They do not re represent any threat to humans which we like that. They're often seen over Antarctica. So these aliens are often seen over Antarctica and I kind of want to do a whole video about Antarctica. If you're interested in that, let me know in the comments. Antarctica is fascinating to me. The reasons for the Mythile visits is unknown. And the last Earthside sighting was May 1st, 1997 and in Antarctica. Antarctica UFO sightings. That would be an, a good episode, I think. What do you guys think? Next up is Lily Allen, whose song Smile I Adore. Every time I hear it, it's just, I have to sing every word. Such a fun song. Great karaoke song. Thank you, Lily Allen, for birthing that song. And also, Alfie, great. Did you guys know that, um, oh my god, what's his name? He, her little brother, Alfie, who the song Alfie is about, is, uh, the like guy who everybody hates on Game of Thrones, who, oh my god, why can I only remember that he like had his man parts chopped off? You guys will know. Say who it is in the comments. <laughs> Alan, do you remember? Alan knows, here we go. Here's a picture. <laughs> First of all, this costume is just okay. It had a lot of positive online reviews, and this one is a little bit older. Obviously, she did a performance in it. It's cute, but like, does she really look like an alien? Eh, I'm gonna have to give this one two and a half alien heads. A Alan, what do you say? Ooh, he's harsher than me. Sorry, Lily, but I have to give you reptilian. Um, my reason for this is because um, she's green and she looks lizard-like. So I thought she went the lizard route for her alien. So I'm going to give her reptilian. <laughs> and so also they transform into humans and she looks very much like a human. So... Maybe this is what a reptilian alien would dress up like on Halloween to throw us off. <laughs> so what is a reptilian alien? This is the most known and feared of the reptoid species, which apparently there are three of. There are lots of rumors about famous people and like influential people being reptilians. I'm not condoning that. This is for fun. Purposes of fun. Lily Allen costume is a reptilian alien, okay? They have permanently been on Earth for 15,000 years, which is confirmed, allegedly. But the belief is that they may have been here permanently or on and off for millions of years. They come from the constellation Draco. They have a presence on thousands of planets and have colonized at least 500. And they do this by means of infiltration within leadership of the planet which is creepy. Side note, sorry if you hear noises from outside, they're taking my trash out. Some, but not all of their members have the power to shape shift and some have telepathy as well. But I guess not all of them have 
either or both. On Earth, they did not need to infiltrate human leadership all the time because they often lived side by side with us humans, most of them unaware, and they lived our evolution. They're considered one of the most technologically advanced species, but they prefer to work in the shadows, using that as an advantage for the progress of their plans. They can do something that most other alien species can't, which is travel interdimensionally. Some of their high-ranking members also have the power to become invisible. To have that power, though, the reptilian must first be accepted into what they call the Draco. I guess named after their constellation, not Draco Malfoy. My name is Pony D. The reptilians from the Draco have infiltrated or even started the Illuminati. Allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. They have three main bases on Earth, one in the Bermuda Triangle, somewhere off the coast of Denmark, and off of the coast of New Zealand. Some say they will never leave, at least on their own. Honestly, as far as Halloween costumes go, reptilians are a pretty good way to go because it's they're scary. <laughs> I wouldn't want to like mess with a reptilian. So I also gave Miss Lily Allen the Solipsy Ray, which is what we call the Greys, which are probably the most like known and talked about alien species. The reason that I gave her this one is because um, she's like green and looks like a simple alien, and that's kind of how people describe the Greys. Not that she really looks like the Greys, but again, I gave her a two and a half star head, alien head rating, so this is what you get. Unlike the reptilians, this is a peaceful and harmonious race. They have one main leader, and his name is Y. Martin. Their civilization is two billion years old. Once, they were at the same level of development as ours, but I guess they have, you know, surpassed that. They have no colonies, are completely f and they are completely focused on the development of other planets and races or species. They come from the constellation Cygnus. They have one powerful weapon that keeps other aliens away that may try to invade them. And at one time, this other alien species called the Maltre um, lost five ships because of it, allegedly. <laughs> this, is, this is hopeful. They said that the human race over the next thousands of years still has 645 options left to save ourselves. It's very specific. 645. And this is kind of old, so I wonder how many we've rolled out. Hope it's not too many. <laughs> we still have 645 options to save ourselves, our planet, and guarantee the future of our species. But it will all depend on our ability to travel through space. And then finally, I threw this third one in there because I thought, like, she did kind of look the most like this one. It's very humanoid. Their face is very, you know, could be Lily's relative in her alien costume. So, um, and that is called, and, and they are called the Killy Tukert. How'd I do? And these aliens come from the constellation Vela. They grow up to two meters high, which is equivalent to six feet. And they live up to 200 years. They can shapeshift and are very hard to detect. When they shape shift, the only thing they cannot change is the size and color of their eyes. Because the eyes are the window to the soul, I guess. They are one of the oldest known alien species. They do not abduct humans, so we like them. Thank you for, you know, letting us mind our own business. Appreciate you. And they were last seen on Earth on July of 2008. So those are all the aliens that I think match Lily Allen's costume. So next up here, I have Rachel Bilson, who I have to give, I love her, early 2000s icon, but I got to give her one alien head because like she just went to Party City and got some stuff and was like, I'll be an alien. Ha ha ha. You be an astronaut. Ha ha ha. And Adam Brody's astronaut is like pretty legit, but her alien, nah, mm, one alien head for sure. Oh, Alan, what do you what do you write Rachel's costume? I don't even think he's being too harsh this time. For Miss Rachel, the first alien I picked was the Smod. Is that's how I'm gonna say it. And I picked this one because 
they look like humans and she doesn't look like an alien. <laughs> So, yeah, first of all, there's no picture to compare to, but it says that they resemble humans. So, um, so does she. They come from the planet Svok and the constellation Batarae. Their UFOs have a conical shape. According to one other alien race, they only have six ships left. They have colonized 20 planets, 18 of which were inhabited. They first visited Earth 2,500 years ago and are very interested in our religious beliefs. And I guess, unfortunately, except for their colonizers, um, they are, according to other aliens, a race in decline and they are weakening. And then, once again, like I did for Miss Lily Allen, I decided I would also give Rachel um, another alien often mistaked as the greys because I feel like that's the look that she was going for even if it was a mist. <laughs> Sorry for all the shade, Rachel. I'm sure if she did it again, she would do it better. But, come on. Another name for the Zeta Reticuli I'm going to try to say is the Shamptbala. How'd I do? They are often confused with the Solipses Ray or the Maitre, which we will get to. Um, the Solipses Ray are the gray aliens I discussed with Lily Allen. They come from the constellation Nets. They are allies of the Anunnaki and they cooperate with them on different planets. They are the representations of the Anunnaki on Earth and send them information about humans at least 25 times a year. I feel like that means like a dun dun dun, but are the Anunnaki good or bad in this theory? What do you think? The Anunnaki also, like I said before, created a subspecies of the Zeta Reticuli, I guess to look more human-like, but leaving enough differences that you can tell them apart. And they became some of the pharaohs of Egypt, which maybe Rachel wasn't the best person to give this, but you know, here we are. The most well-known of which was Akhenaten, who was removed from power by reptilians who infiltrated themselves in the court as temple priests. The first reports of Zetas on Earth go back to 4000 AD, but that um, actual number, I guess, is most likely much farther away, much more in the distant past, according to this book. They were the first hybrids to be engineered by the Anunnaki. The alien subspecies still exists on Earth, apparently and they still present the same physical differences that they created them with. Um, uh, the sexual organs of the alien are identical to humans, so they made sure to get that right. But they want to make clear that the Zeta still exists on Earth in both the original and the subspecies form. Their location on Earth is unknown. All right, next up we have Lizzo, who is a superstar. Everyone loves Lizzo. She's so great. This costume is amazing. Baby Yoda, come on. I love it. So I'm sure you Star Wars fans are going to tell me that this is not Yoda's planet and, you know, origin story, but I'm taking it away from Star Wars, and we're using this um, alien species book to determine what alien she looks the most like. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna have to give this one four alien heads out of five. I think she's killing it, it's amazing. Baby Yoda is so cute. This is like funny but cute. Love it, Lizzo, amazing, great job. What do you think, Alan? Even Alan likes it. Let's go, get it, Lizzo. So, Miss, Miss Lizzo. Um, the first alien I have paired her with is the Maitre. The Maitre. The Maitre? Maitre? Maitre. 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 Who have two home planets in the constellation Magopi. They have the same height as humans, but are considered by most alien species to be parasites, which is kind of mean, but I guess let's learn more about them before I say that. Also, I matched this one with uh, Baby Lizzo, Baby Lizzo, Baby Yoda Lizzo because of the like eyes and the green and her lips and the nose. That's what that's what's giving Maitre. Okay. 
apparently these aliens visited Earth for the first time in prehistoric times. So like, uh, they've been here a long time. They abduct humans openly and have a goal of colonizing Earth. Great. But this hasn't happened, allegedly, because we've been protected by other alien races, um, such as the ones in the Council of Five, which I will talk about a little bit in a minute. This book uses a not great term, but they are both genders, male and female, and they live up to be 120 years old. They have colonized at least 26 planets, and they have abducted at least 5,000 humans, which were all men. Why? But I guess that kind of makes sense because I feel like men have more alien abduction stories than women. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. And please like and subscribe if you think this is fun. I will make more videos like this. I'll make a sequel. Yeah, like and subscribe. They have visited Earth at least 200 times. And the last known sighting was in November of 2006 in Alaska, um, Nome, I believe. Allegedly, the Maitre have been involved in several human tragedies throughout history. And these include some of the worst plagues were inflicted by them with the, I guess, help or approval of the reptilians who allegedly never want the um, population of Earth to go over 8 billion. The reptilians, on the other hand, of the Maitre have abducted, have been abducted female uh, humans for years. Yay, equality. Most of their hybrid offspring are sent away to other planets that they have colonized, and some stay on Earth where they become powerful members of society and infiltrate it. So, Lizzo is dressed up as a pretty scary alien, if you ask me, even though she's cute baby Yoda. And then the other alien that I assigned Lizzo is called the Eckhart. They come from a sexy constellation. <laughs> they come from the constellation Sexton. One of their ships allegedly crashed outside of Brazil in 1996. And two of the ship's occupants are allegedly um, being held by the American government after paying billions of dollars to Brazil to, um, I guess, have these aliens in their control. They have the fastest ships of any alien race, which is awesome. And they were last seen in February of 2002 near Brazil once again. Mm -hmm. So what is the Council of Five? Well, um, it is apparently made up of five different alien species that want to protect I guess different aliens in, and species, including humans. Um, the aliens that make up the Council of Five are the Orella, the Aragot, the Jinvig, the Raiden, and the Emmerther. Very little is known about each of these species of alien. This council has apparently been protecting Earth for as long as there's records of Earth. Some say they've even been protecting our planet since before humans existed for millions of years, so thanks guys, <laughs> if this is true. We appreciate you a lot, you know, pretty cool. We feel special and um, thank you. Um, one other alien race reported that the Council of Five last reported on Earth in um, 1944, which is a year before the end of World War II, which could make sense. Allegedly, they found a note that said that the Council of Five will be meeting on Earth once again in the last 10 days of 2013. It also warned that the presence of these five alien species coming to Earth could, could cause cosmic events and could affect Earth and Earth's atmosphere. It was also said that humans would be seeing an increase of alien activity during that time. The purpose of this meeting was to discuss the possible threats on humans and Earth, and also to talk about the fact that so many new aliens have been visiting Earth lately, and lately meaning in the past 500 years. <laughs> they say that the Council of Five has monitored humans since um, pre-evolution. After the Anunnaki tampered with the primate DNA, allegedly, and made the um, humans we are now, the Council of Five decided to not only watch us, but to protect us as well. Because they realized that one day humans would be able to join other alien species, 
in development and enlightenment. So there's some positivity in all of this. <laughs> Next we have Joseph Gordon-Levitt, who was not dressing up for Halloween, but an actual Star Wars premiere, and he dressed up in this Yoda costume, and um, <laughs> I'll give him two alien heads, because it's homemade and he tried. What do you say, Alan? <laughs> I didn't think he would give much higher than that. I'm surprised he got any alien heads. So this is what Joseph Gordon-Levitt wore to the Force Awakens red carpet. <laughs> and it's hilarious. Love that he did that. So for the entertainment value, he gets two alien heads for me. Um, and, you know, he really went for it. He did. What aliens do I think he is? Once again, sorry, Star Wars fans. We're not going by Star Wars lore. I think that Joseph really looks like this Grizzly alien, which is honestly a very cute name for an alien. A little Grizzly, A little Grizzly, Love it. These aliens average the same height as humans and are covered in soft, silky hair. The Grizzlies have two home planets in the Virgo star system, which unfortunately Joseph Gordon-Levitt is an Aquarius. <laughs> They have visited Earth at least 12 times. Their first visit came during Egypt's pharaoh era. Allegedly, they spent 10 uninterrupted years on Earth here and had a pyramid made for them. They have been keeping a close eye on humans for the past 200 years, knowing that some powerful humans can and have been misled by aliens who are disguised as humans. Only six of them travel at a time on the ships, which I thought was like a really fun detail that they had. I don't know why. If this, like, It's just fun to me that there's like six of them on a ship. Like, hey, Grizzly, I'll meet you on the bridge. Okay, Grizzly, let's go, Grizzly. I don't know. I just have this whole picture in my head. The last sightings on Earth were in January 2002 and February 2004. The next alien I assigned to Joseph was the Perut Avalumu. Um, and I picked these ones for Joseph because the ears, come on, twins. This alien's origin is unknown. They are often sighted in the northwest of the USA, um, particularly around Oregon, allegedly. They have a special interest in Earth's oceans and are known to have USOs. USOs are so cool what they are. They are UFOs that go under the ocean like submarines but also up into space like a rocket ship pretty freaking awesome if you ask me in the 1980s and the 1990s they allegedly almost crashed into u.s navy ships when they were working out new technology they are peaceful and mostly nocturnal and were last seen in the year 2000 near san francisco next we have the halloween supermodel miss heidi klum who is so great on Halloween. She, this year she was a worm. It was hilarious. I was dying laughing. Um, but every year she throws a Halloween party in New York and she just does an amazing costume and she's been an alien three different times. So we're going to go through those. Um, this is her first alien costume, the golden alien. And it's pretty great, but it's not my favorite of the three. So I'm going to give it four alien heads. What do you think, Ellen? He has a crush on Heidi. <laughs> um, so the first alien I went with is the Kurs, and this alien immerses itself in a precious gold-like substance, and so of course I had to give Heidi's golden alien this um, alien, the Kurs, who are also known as the gods of lands. They are believed to be related to the Anunnaki and come from the planet Dilemons. They are the alien species behind the story of Enlil and Nunlil, which is a Sumerian creation story. They were allegedly directly involved in the human race during our early stages. After centuries of being away from Earth, they have recently returned, their leader being amongst them, the ones who came here. They will now stay on Earth permanently and will have an important role in years to come. And like I said, they spend time immersed in a precious gold-like liquid that presumably expands their lifetime. And then the second alien I picked for Heidi also looks gold. 
um, and that is called the Ramay. They come from Capella in the constellation Oriego. They are known to be a very peaceful race and they tried to coexist with humans. They allegedly created the Mayan civilization and they did this by placing humans from different places around Earth in South America. They are a race of scientists and they taught, they allegedly taught the Mayans about astronomy and time. They also allegedly left Earth around the Mayans' highest splendor and after this, in their honor, I guess, the Mayans started the blood sacrifices and this species has been on Earth many times after that. Their last sighting was in Bora Bora in 2001. Heidi's next costume is kind of like a robot space alien, so she was a little bit harder to find matches to in this book, but I did my best. Um, let me know what you think. I am giving this costume, I'm going to give it three and a half alien heads because I don't quite like it as much as the gold alien, um, and I definitely don't like it as much as the next one. I just feel like it's the least realistic of the aliens that she did. What do you think, Alan? He just thinks she's cute and, you know, she's purple. So the first species that I matched with Heidi for this costume is called X5 Taiku. The reason I picked this one is because they were created by the Maitre, unfortunately, to be used as slaves, but I thought um, we think of robots as being human created, so maybe that this species would be somewhat robotic. And unfortunately, they are still slaves to the Maitre. They are often sent by the Maitre to security sensitive regions and they conduct abductions, but they also work as messengers. They can live forever as they are not organic, but the materials that the Maitre need to use them are allegedly very rare. So there is an estimation of only 300 of them. They are able to use rational thinking as well as fly ships and other tasks. They were last seen on Earth in July of 1997 in Brisbane, Australia. And then the next species that I gave he Heidi is called the Puhuxidae, and I assigned this species to her because they were allegedly very, very tall. And look at those stilts. I mean, if you see her standing next to the person in the picture, like, how is she going to walk around like that all night? That's awesome. I love it. It's such a good costume. I would love to see someone wearing that at a Halloween party. Um, so the Pahuxity have no image in this book, but allegedly they were very influential in South and Central America. At one point, they allegedly had 2,000 members living amongst the people of South America um, until one day most of them left, leaving only 25, and then allegedly the humans killed the 25 remaining for unknown reasons. They have not returned to Earth since the incident, which um can't blame them. They were known to be very tall. Um, some reports say they were um, as tall as 13 feet, which is huge. <laughs> Giants. And then we have my favorite of Heidi's costumes. What do you think, Alan? Um, he loves her. I have to give her five out of five alien heads for this one. I gotta agree with you. Um, Slade, so creepy, so like real looking, love it. Great job, Heidi. So like sciencey, sexy, but not. <laughs> the first species that I picked for Heidi for this one is called the rake. And um, I actually really think that like she looks like the female version of the alien in this picture. Did you know about this, Heidi? <laughs> Out of the 58 races that are discussed in the book where I got all these species from, um, this is the species to allegedly um, visit Earth the least at only five times. They apparently visited the Middle East region and were thought to have created the myth of the jinn. According to some Islamic scholars, they now inhibit an unseen dimension beyond the existing dimensions of our universe. But according to other alien races, they simply stopped visiting Earth because they couldn't handle our fauna and flora. They were last seen on Earth in 1712 AD. The next alien species is called Strom, which sounds kind of German like Heidi. <laughs> um, this alien comes from the constellation Ursa Minor. They are invertebrates and cholenterates. 
I'm gonna put up on the screen what that means because I don't know. Vegetation is extremely important to their culture and it's their main reason for visiting Earth. They have been here and visited us at least 200 times. They act with extreme caution and are rarely seen by humans. Their first visit here was just after the last ice age. They have 20 colonies in another galaxy. Their ships have the shape of an octagon and they were last seen in October of 1976 around Oregon. And finally for Heidi, I have the Nagamuk or the Nomopo. And these are the aliens that inspired the aliens in the movie Independence Day, which scared the crap out of me as a child. It's kind of funny. I used to be really afraid of aliens and now I'm very interested in them, um, partially because of this movie and I guess partially because of this alien species. <laughs> um, but uh, allegedly their first visit to Earth only happened in 1989. They are known to abduct humans and they exercise control over the minds, which they use for their own benefit after the release of their captives. And the reason for this is unknown. They are one of the oldest alien species. And allegedly they're the one alien species that human governments are the most afraid of um, in consideration for the future of humanity. Next up, I have Leona Lewis, who looks so much like this picture. I'm like, is she really an alien? <laughs> but she's too tall to really be this alien. But I mean, I mean, among other things. But her picture and then this picture, they look, they're twins. It's so spot on. I feel like she like looked at this book and was like, oh, I could do that. And she killed it. She slayed. So good. I'm giving her five out of five alien heads. What do you think, Alan? So for Leona, I only picked one species because she looks so much like them, and that is the Lang. They are a small species, and they only grow to be about 70 centimeters. They come from the sixth star in the constellation Comma Bernices. They have three home planets, maybe four, and have colonized at least 10. They were one of the first races to visit Earth and they started the stories of fairies. Two alien species allege that they have abducted over 10 million humans throughout history. That number is highly disputed to be much lower by two other alien species. And they even made a statement to a Russian president saying that the alien species Lang has never abducted a human and they were last sighted in New Zealand in 2006 with a group of 20 members. Next, we have another costume that I absolutely love, Janae Aiko. She said that she was dressed as a serious star seed. Love the commitment, love everything about this. She looks so good, 10 out of 10, but five out of five alien heads. What do you say, Alan? We're team Janae over here. She, she looks good. She could be an alien. She could be a serious star seed. But, you know, I actually did try to find an alien to match her that was allegedly from Sirius, but I could not. So what I did find was um, this one ominously just called 2017, which has no image. Allegedly, they contacted humans one time um, contacting the USSR in 1935. According to the reports, they spoke some kind of Slavic dialect. They left a handwritten message with about 10 sentences, which I would love to read. They are an estimated 13.2 billion light years away from Earth. They travel with wormholes, which allows them to bend space. So I guess out of those 10 sentences, only one of them is revealed, nine of them are blacked out, and the one that we can see reads 2017-2022, our current year. But according to the reports, they were tall, blonde, and smelled like flowers, which, come on, Janae looks like she smells like flowers here. And she's blonde, beautiful, tall, all the above. And then the second alien that I'm assigning to Janae is Palladians. They come from the solar system surrounding um, the Pallades stars, more precisely from the planet Era near the star Tegeta. They are associated with spiritual growth and can literally grow up to eight feet tall. They practice sexual cultivation, 
which I'm not exactly sure what that is, but they, I guess, express a difference between their sexual expressions and their sensual emotions. Their ships are known as beam ships, and although they regularly visit Earth, allegedly, they have remained mostly silent since 10,000 BC. They are one of the oldest known races, and I guess they have the capability to reach their next goal, which is even higher spir spiritual growth. But Janae looks so spiritual. She looks like she smells like flowers. Both of those aliens match her. Five out of five alien heads for sure. <laughs> next, we have Kim Kardashian, who is dressed as an X-Men character. Um, but like Star Wars, we're not going with the X-Men alien species. Uh, so let's go ahead and rate Kim's alien. I actually, she did a really good job. She slayed this. Um, I'm going to give her, I'm going to give her five out of five alien heads. What do you think, Alan? So what did I match to the famous Kim Kardashian? I think that she is an AFIM alien. What is that, you ask? Well, they have, they're covered in blue spots. That's one thing that made me give her this rating, or this match. What is an AFIM alien? They come from the constellation Lyra. They call themselves the AFIM Spanisty because of a war they had against a different alien species called the Spanisty. I guess that alien species had 12 times more members than they did and they also had 35 times more ships but still the AFIM won so they took their name and put it on theirs as like a symbol and warning to other alien species not to fuck with them <laughs> they are similar to humans in stature and their skin is covered in blue spots which is darker on males and lighter on females their planet is called Cremia I Petri Technologically, they are extremely developed. Um, they can travel from their planet to Earth in only 20 minutes. They don't need oxygen. And they have colonized 10 planets in a non-violent way. I guess that's like, if you're going to colonize, don't be violent. Or don't colonize. When they are close to humans, they will become invisible. But when humans are close to them, they have a certain amount of unexplained anxiety. Their shapes are small and spherical in shape. And um, one of their main reasons for visiting Earth is to study the human deviation. Um, and I guess determine the development of the human species. And then for Kim, we have Tzar 3, which I picked this because the eye looks a lot like her cat eye. There is very little known about them, but reports say that it takes them two Earth years to get here from their planet. They are survivors of an extinct reptoid race, and they don't have the same technology or knowledge as other reptoid races do. And they do have some human characteristics, such as skin. Allegedly, two of their species were captured in Italy in either 1977 or 1978. Three days later, they were transferred to a U.S. base and then to some other undisclosed location where they supposedly still remain. Allegedly, there's a video recording of the species. But the last sighting of them was, was in January of 2001 near Victoria, Canada. We're getting close to the end here. But next up, we have Kim's daughter, Northwest, who is adorable and, um, I love that she dressed up as an alien this year. Her costume is so good. I gotta give her five out of five alien heads. What do you say, Alan? We agree. The best thing about Norse costume is her head. I feel like she has the best alien head out of all of the aliens. This weird, like, almost like cone shape, but not quite. Um, so the first alien that I picked for Northwest um, is called the Jeff Fox, which <laughs> I don't know if that's really how you pronounce it, but I'm calling it. I'm calling them the Jeff Foxes. The Jeff Foxes come from the constellation Indus. They are known by other species as peacemakers and they have very advanced technology. Their first sightings on Earth date back all the way back to 15,000 BC. Allegedly, they met with JFK three weeks before he was killed and around the same time, 
They met with other human leaders, but they have not been seen on Earth since JFK's death. In 1965, they gave a message to all countries that have nuclear capabilities, but the message is unknown. And then the second alien that I assigned to Northwest is the Dorsey. And it's, again, the head. It's like these ridges above her eyes, the color. She just really nailed this creepy Dorsey alien. Great job, North. And also, this is a smaller alien, so it works well being a child dressed up as her, as this alien. They grow to a maximum height of 0.5 meters. They have allegedly visited Earth um, at least 250 times. They come from Cassiopeia, where they have at least two home planets. They eat other alien races, as well as humans. Cool! Very good Halloween costume, it's creepy. <laughs> Their alien species is 4 billion years old, and they've been in a constant state of war with another alien species for 2 billion years. Guys, figure it out. <laughs> Their last sighting on Earth was in November of 2001 in the Italian Alps. And last but not least, we have the queen of Instagram, Kylie Jenner. So she did a really awesome costume, cool photo shoot. I'm really into all of this. Like... The fetusness of it, everything. Mwah. Chef's kiss. Good job, Kylie. Very, very creepy. <laughs> um, but also still a little sexy. I'm into it. So, Kylie, I give you... She also gets five out of five alien heads. What do you say, Alan? Oh, I wasn't expecting that, actually. So... Um, I assigned Kylie three different alien species, so let's just get straight to it. The first species I assigned Kylie is called the Dries. These guys are blue, and she's very blue. Um, also kind of veiny, and that's how I was taking her stripes. So I thought this was a good match for Kylie. Their height is around 2.5 meters, or 8 feet tall, and they have very complex skulls. They have visited Earth at least 20 times. They carry out human abductions, which they use for reproduction, which ties into the whole fetus photography. <laughs> they have abducted at least 520 humans, both males and females. Equality, equality, equality. They come from the third star in the constellation, Cetus. They have two home planets and have colonized at least 40 planets with the help of slaves. Gross. Ten of those planets were taken with the use of force. They work together with three other alien species. They mostly eat animal protein-derived products. According to alien reports, they are not mentally or spiritually developed enough to interact with most alien species. Their two home planets' chemical composition is similar to Earth, and they are allegedly supposed to reveal themselves to us by the end of 2022. So, time's running out. Is it going to happen? Dries. The next species that I have picked out for Kylie is called Kilima Air, aka K Air. They come from the constellation Crux near Gakrux. It is a very hard race to track down or spot. Allegedly, both the USA and Russia have created a special te technology to be able to detect them when they do come to Earth. But even then, they've only been sighted eight times. The purpose of their presence is unknown, but when they are sighted, it's usually in the Bermuda Triangle. Maybe that's why so many mysterious things happen. And last but not least, the final species that we're going to talk about on today's episode of the Alien Abduction Support, Support Group. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this. I appreciate you for listening. I've had fun going through these alien species. Tell me what you think. Tell me if you thought... Somebody matched, like, one I said for someone else better. Any other celebrities, alien costumes you want me to go through. Maybe I could do some stuff from movies or, like, music videos. For example, Doja Cat. Um, yeah, let me know in the comments what you think. But our final alien species that we will be going over that is assigned to Kylie Jenner is the Alcobeta. Now, we know Kylie likes her tequila. 818. I guess that's Kendall's Ram, but come on. She drinks it. But uh, alcobeta, not alcohol. 
they have over 5,000 ships and they have colonized over a hundred planets on their own. They are considered by all other alien species to be parasites, which they sound kind of shitty, to be honest. Abductions of humans are frequent and ongoing, and the purposes are unknown. They do not like to interact with other alien species. They come from the constellation Persis and are extremely aggressive. They are suspected to be involved in several airplane crashes, which um, I wanted to end with this one so I could throw it back to my last three-part video, which is about Frederick Valentich, who was an Australian pilot who disappeared possibly because of alien involvement. So go back and watch that if uh, that sounds interesting to you. But maybe it was the Alka Beta. Hmm? Kylie? Kylie, do you know? Hmm? Alan? They were last seen in September in 2001 in Canada. So watch out for these guys. We don't like parasite aliens. Mm -mm -mm. So thank you, Earthlings, for watching another episode of the Alien Abduction Support Group. I hope you had fun with this one. It was totally different than my last video, um, but I had a lot of fun making it. Alan had a lot of fun uh, doing commentary with me. Honestly, he's a little nervous talking about the other alien species. That's why he kept on his hat. Um, I'm not really sure if it's if it does anything but you know I support Alan and what he wants to do and if he wants to wear a tinfoil hat for the whole episode then so be it it, it looks good on him so uh, thank you for watching please like and subscribe let me know if you want me to do another video like this um, if I should do another deep dive like Frederick Valentich I'm here for all of your comments concerns you know let me know what you think like subscribe um, tell me some topics you want me to cover. I really appreciate you watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Um, me and Alan, uh, me and Alan love you. We come in peace. Peace out, Earthlings. Thank you for watching.